Here at home, a Lower Ninth Ward man said that he saved money for more than 20 years making mufaladas in the French Quarter and more recently manning the shoeshine booth at a downtown hotel. But now those life savings are in the hands of the federal government and Kermit Warren has enlisted attorneys to try to get his money back. Investigative reporter Mike Perlstein has his story. 58-year-old Kermit Warren had been laid off from his shoeshine stand in the Roosevelt Hotel due to the COVID shutdown when he decided to buy a truck to expand his salvage business. So he took decades worth of savings, more than $28,000, and he flew with his son to Ohio to buy a truck. When he saw that the vehicle wouldn't work, he and his son went back to the Columbus airport to return home. I got through the screening with the TSA lady. She asked me what was in my bag. I told her I have close to $30,000 cash money. She said it was okay for me to fly with that. But when federal drug enforcement agents were alerted, they took a different position. They saw the one-way plane tickets, some nervous answers, and a drug-sniffing dog responding to the cash. When confronted, oh, Warren said um, he panicked and falsely identified himself as a police officer. But unfortunately, TSA and DEA have a see cash, seize cash policy. I say, sir, I hadn't did anything wrong. You are not charging me with a crime. Why are you just robbing me of my hard earned cash? Warren and his son were not arrested, but the agents were suspicious that the money might be connected to illegal drugs, so they seized it. And unlike criminal charges in which a defendant is innocent until proven guilty, Warren must now fight in court to get it back. The Fed sees more than a billion dollars in assets annually. And attorney Dan Albin of the Virginia-based Institute for Justice is not only representing Warren, but also trying to reform the policy. And he has to go to court to prove his own innocence in order to get his property back. With Mr. Warren's $28,000 still confiscated by the government, about all he has to his name is his house here in the Lower Ninth Ward. It's just been really hard for me to, to, to pay bills and to, to, to buy groceries. As a deacon of his church, Warren says he is relying on his faith that he will eventually get his money back. That, along with a legal fight, he said he never imagined he'd be fighting. Mike Perlstein, Eyewitness News. And we reached out to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Columbus, Ohio, that is handling the forfeiture case and are still waiting for a response.